I think Dickie Attenborough, and he was always Dickie Attenborough, used his own sense of human rights, purpose, morality, and threaded them through his films. He lived these things in his soul, and they played out in what he did in life. Richard was always very much about pushing love and warmth being the forefront of everything. He was a person of extraordinary interest. He didn't just make films, he inspired people. Well, we had very different childhoods because my brother was besotted with the theater from a very, very early age. It was Dick's lifeblood, you know, the theatre. And it was what he lived for. He was always playing parts, doing them at home. I mean, just for fun, becoming other people, as it were. He was continually putting on plays for charities and that sort of thing. He put on a show, I remember, it consisted of sketches. And we were dressed as two char ladies, two cleaning ladies. And we were called Ladies What Come to Oblige. And that, I regret to say, was perpetuated with a photograph. <laughs> My father was an academic and very scholarly, and he simply couldn't understand that my elder brother, his firstborn son, was failing in standard exams, what he thought were child, my father thought were child's play. And he was failing, of course, he was spending all his time in the theater. And eventually he said, I've decided to give you for your birthday uh, the entrance fee for a scholarship at the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art. And said my father, if you get it, I will back you. But if you don't get it, you've got to stop thinking about the theatre and get down and learn your French regular verbs. And that was the deal. And 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 it got it. <laughs> and I, I know, and my father's thrilled. He said, oh, oh, right, you've got it. You're going to be an actor. Right, now let me tell you about Hamlet. <laughs> Which is my father's idea of theatre. <laughs> I wondered how he would be as a commercial director. And uh, Oh, What a Lovely War was made it clear to me that he was uh, a truly imaginative director. The film broke so many boundaries and so many frontiers and, and also a monument, I mean, <laughs> to his persuasive powers. I mean, the fact that he got all the titled knight, theatrical knights to pay bit parts, you know, so speaks an awful lot for his persuasive powers. And Dickie, he said, would he be allowed to use my students to perform, you know, what a lovely war? And I said, of course. And from then on, we, he was darling Dickie to me. The wellspring uh, of, of actually wanting to convince people about things is, I think, an inheritance of the teaching passion which my father had and my mother had. Both my parents were certainly left-wing and believed they had social responsibilities. Good works were what you did uh, in their book, and they made that very clear. Social responsibility underlies everything you do, and it doesn't matter whether you're a theatre director or a film director or an actor or anything else. That sort of um, social conscience of my parents was something which, which Richard certainly inherited. I love the university. It's always really in my thoughts and feelings. And Dickie and I agreed on one thing, certainly, that feelings matter as much as thoughts. When Sussex were good enough uh, to give me an honorary degree and he was Chancellor, and I think we were both entertained about the medieval costumes which we were called upon to wear, dressing up in these curious hats and gowns. <laughs> we both thought one another looked, shall I say, curious, and made us laugh. My dear brother, if he had one one thing which I was quite misguided, um, and that was that he had the impression, which stemmed from the time when he was an early teenager, and from what his father said to him, that he had not come up to the mark in terms of academic achievement. And the fact that he transcended all that very, very early on didn't convince him. What he did have was a love of the university, which was a very remarkable phenomenon. I think it's right that 
to say that DNA, you know, Richard's DNA is in the university, I think that he was very much about being forward thinking, about being a global citizen, an internationalist. He still always thought uh, that, um, that there, there was an ideal up there which was an academic one and he hadn't reached it. The awards which he really valued were the academic awards. And he really valued being in, involved in an academic institution of the stature of Sussex. It meant a huge amount to him. He was a really exceptional person. And you felt that his being chairman of Channel 4, for example, was that we felt that our own sense of commitment to morality and what was right and human rights was blessed from above, from him. And that we couldn't therefore go wrong. In fact, the only way we could go wrong would be to desert the sort of principles by which he lived and made his films and was in life. Who will believe my verse in time to come if it were filled with your most high deserts? Though yet heaven knows it is but as a tomb which hides your life and shows not half your parts. If I could write the beauty of your eyes, and in fresh numbers number all your graces, the age to come would say, This poet lies. Such heavenly touches ne'er touched earthly faces. So should my papers, yellowed with their age, be scorned, like old men of less truth than tongue. And your true rights be termed a poet's rage and stretched metre of an antique song. But were some child of yours alive that time, you should live twice, in it and in my rhyme. <laughs>